morning, everybody. So good to see all your beautiful faces here. So as we gather today outside this fence on this somber memorial to stand in solidarity with thousands of other people in the world who are doing the same thing, to remember the victims of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, I think we also are standing to remember other Habaksha, other victims of nuclear weapons and atomic weapons, including those in the Marshall Islands, downwinders of the Nevada test site and other test sites around the world, and the thousands of nuclear weapons workers, including some from right here who have been made ill by on-the-job exposure. For them, we say no more nukes and never again. But as we stand here to outside these gates, 5,000 people are showing up for work, driving by us. It's partly why we have it right on this corner, so they'll see us. And they're going in there, some of them to maintain these tools of mass destruction. Others are developing an entirely new generation of nuclear weapons. And every year, right behind this fence, they manage to spend a billion dollars on these pursuits. And this is just a portion of the overall funds that are devoted to this work in our country on these nuclear nightmares. The complex of which New Livermore Lab is a part of actually is spending $2 million every hour of every day on nuclear weapons. And if the weaponeers get their way, who are in control of this right now, by 2030 they'll be spending twice that much, $4 million an hour on nuclear weapons. And the plan is not just to refurbish the weapons in the stockpile, but we're also building a whole new generation of submarines to deliver those weapons, a whole new generation of bombers to deliver those weapons, and a whole new generation of intercontinental ballistic missiles to deliver those weapons. Some of these things that we're building aren't going to even be ready for 20 years or more. And adjusted for inflation, we're spending more now than we did at the height of the Cold War on these weapons. Now we want to invite Chizu Hamada, who will speak on the links between nuclear weapons, nuclear power, and the ongoing dangers of Fukushima. Good morning. I was born in Tokyo, Japan, three years after the United States of America um, the, uh, detonated two atomic bombs over Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And uh, while I've called America my home for 40 years, I can never forgive this country for the inhumane act it committed in 1945. Simply put, atomic bombings are international war crimes. But I am grateful to see you get together here. I believe your will and strength to abolish the nuclear weapons will change the world one day. The USA has spent billions of dollars to develop these new uh, nuclear weapons and technology. And of course, they have looked for the way to recoup their investment. That's where nuclear power plants come in. The USA sold nuclear power plants to Japan, and Japan regretfully bought them. Imagine that Japan, a country that suffered so much from atomic bomb, decided that nuclear power was a good choice. The American, because the American government was cunning and sly, and Japanese government was stupid and vain, and the Japanese government wanted to own the nuclear technology and the weapons. Since then, 54 nuclear power plants have sprouted like a mushroom on an earthquake from island. 54 plants. And three years and five months ago, Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant melted down when a huge earthquake and tsunami struck Japan. Were we supposed to be surprised?
we are now asked to consider that a nuclear weapon is about to fall. And think of the person whose name you're wearing. Jackie Cavasso and I will soon sound the second siren to commemorate this time both Hiroshima and the bomb that fell on August 9th on Nagasaki. Those who wish may lie down and we will chalk your body around the outline to commemorate those who were vaporized and what's left, which you can see in the museums in Japan, is the smudge or the shadow. At some point, the police officers will come out and ask people to disperse. If you do not wish to risk arrest, when you're asked to disperse, please get up, leave your shadow, which is a powerful statement in and of itself. We are all here with the principles of nonviolence today, um, and one of them is don't run, it can cause panic. So with that, Jackie and I will sound the siren. As we've heard, the theme this morning is failure to disarm. And I don't think I need to tell those of you who live around here about a failure to disarm. And I certainly don't have to tell the people of the Marshall Islands about a failure to disarm. They endured 67 nuclear weapon tests by the US from 1946 to 1958. They continue to suffer health and environmental consequences that really are, are beyond my imagination. The leaders of the Marshall Islands want to make sure that no one ever again suffers from the use of a nuclear weapon, whether it's on purpose, whether it's through testing or through the accidental use. That's why on April 24th of this year, just three months ago, the Marshall Islands filed the nuclear zero lawsuits for failure to disarm. <clears throat> the, uh, <laughs> the Marshall Islands filed one lawsuit in US federal district court against the United States. And they also filed nine lawsuits in the International Court of Justice, one for each of the nine nuclear armed nations in the world. The lawsuits allege breach of Article 6 of the Non-Proliferation Treaty and of customary international law. Uh, for those who are not familiar with the Non-Proliferation Treaty, Article 6 calls for good faith negotiations for an uh, end to the nuclear arms race at an early date and to nuclear disarmament. This treaty entered into force 44 years ago, 44 and a half years ago. Uh, that's not an early date. So uh, right there, we have a violation. Uh, right here, we have a violation, the continuation of the nuclear arms race. These lawsuits are unprecedented. <clears throat> they seek to force the nuclear armed nations to answer in a public on the record way about how their actions, modernizing nuclear arsenals, planning for nuclear deployments many decades into the future, boycotting multilateral disarmament initiatives, square with their legal obligations under the Non-Proliferation Treaty and under customary international law. So I want to talk about a few things that you can do to support the Marshall Islands. Uh, this is not just something that needs to play out in court and, and we sit back and, and hope that that the lawyers and, and the courts do their jobs. Uh, this is something that we can all get involved in. And the first thing is to sign a petition. And this petition is, uh, it has two purposes. One is a more immediate purpose, and that is to support the people and the leaders of the Marshall Islands, uh, to, to give them moral support, that we stand behind them for their courageous action. And you can do that online at the website nuclearzero.org. For those of you who use social media, you can check out the Nuclear Age Peace Foundation 
uh, on Facebook and on Twitter. We're always posting the latest updates about the case, uh, as are a number of our colleague organizations around the world, including some of them here today. Encourage groups, uh, civic groups, religious groups that you're involved in to sign on in support of the lawsuits. And most importantly, I think, uh, is to get involved with the local groups that are represented here today. Uh, there is nothing more important than working in your own community to make a better world. Deputy, uh, Deputy Cassell of the Alameda County Sheriff's Office, you are in violation of California Penal Code Section 647C, trespassing. On behalf of the state of California, I demand that you leave immediately. If you fail to do so, you will be arrested. As my friend George Martin would say, Good morning, family. Here we are at a fully functioning, obscenely well-funded United States government nuclear weapons research and development lab, 69 years after the United States unleashed the nuclear age, dropping a single atomic bomb on Hiroshima, which indiscriminately incinerated tens of thousands of children, women, and men in an instant. A tiny and crude nuclear weapon by today's standards justified by a lie of historic proportions that the bombing ended World War II and saved American lives. With the U.S.-Russia conflict over the Ukraine and the U.S. strategic pivot to the Asia-Pacific, we have entered a new era of confrontation among nuclear armed powers and dangers of great power wars. Nuclear tensions in the Middle East, Southeast Asia, and on the Korean Peninsula remind us that the threat of nuclear war is ever present. In a time of qu twin global economic and environmental crises and growing competition over natural resources, the dangers of conflicts among nuclear armed states are increasing. We can't afford to wait decades more for the elimination of nuclear weapons. The Mayor's for Peace 2020 vision is the right vision. In his August 6, 2014 peace declaration, yesterday in Hiroshima, Mayor Kazumi Matsui, the president of Mayor's for Peace, declared, each one of us will help determine the future of the human family. Please put yourself in the place of the Hibaksha. Imagine their experiences, including that day from the depths of hell, actually happening to you or someone in your family. We will steadfastly promote the new movement stressing the humanitarian consequences of nuclear weapons and seeking to outlaw them. We will help to strengthen international public demand for the start of negotiations on a nuclear weapons convention with the goal of the total elimination by 2020. It's our job to hold our government accountable for its failure to disarm. Thank you. People today spoke about the importance of the Marshall Islands suit. This is a, a community from the Pacific Islands who were basically toyed with in terms of giving up their islands so we could detonate them for nuclear testing and then left with the residue of radioactive contamination or a whole variety of other problems that result from their dislocation from their culture and their livelihood. And it's so important that the Marshall Islands have done us a service by initiating a suit against a nuclear weapon state to stop this, not for just, just their legacy issues, but for the rest of the world, that this is madness that should not be generalized in our experience. I get back to my grandchildren again, you know, do I want my grandchildren to grow up in a world like this? I'm glad they're here today, but all of us have to talk to our families about this. This is an issue that's so much about family values, if you're really thinking long term, and about, like, you know, what, where's our planet heading? Thank mm -hmm. you.